The Office Christmas Party. Either it's a great end-of-year celebration and a chance to blow off steam with your colleagues, or it's yet another work obligation filled with forced jollity and awkward interactions during one of the busiest times of the year. Whichever it is, it's a concept that goes back at least as far as the time that Charles Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol in 1843. Because that story features a very famous depiction of an office Christmas party during Scrooge's time with the spirit of Christmas past. In the scene, Scrooge witnesses his younger self as an apprentice to old Fezziwig on Christmas Eve. Master blessed, old Fezziwig, my master alive again, and hosted one of his Christmas parties. Listen to him. <laughs> well, let's all thank goodness that most of us aren't expected to dance at office Christmas parties like everyone was at one of Fezziwig's parties. But, since we're talking about it, what was with that comment we just heard from Fezziwig about bow and curtsy thread the needle? In fact, the passage from the novella describes in elaborate detail the dancing that takes place. It says... In they all came, one after another, some shyly, some boldly, some gracefully, some awkwardly, some pushing, some pulling. In they all came, anyhow, everyhow. Away they all went, twenty couple at once, hands half round and back again the other way, down the middle and up again, round and round in various stages of affectionate grouping, old top couple always turning up in the wrong place, new top couple starting off again as soon as they got there. All top couples at last, and not a bottom one to help them. When this result was brought about, old Fezziwig clapping his hands to stop the dance cried out, Well done! So, what does all of that mean? What's it all about? Well, I can't travel back to Victorian times to find out. Except that I kind of can. I'm Kathleen Myers. My husband James and I are co-directors of the Fezziwig Party Dancers at the Dickens Fair. Yes, once again, Christmas Past has visited the Great Dickens Christmas Fair. It's a Bay Area tradition that recreates the world of Dickens's London and the world of his most famous work, A Christmas Carol. A big part of that experience is Fezziwig's Ball, where attendees can witness and even participate in the kind of dancing we're talking about. No hoop skirts or top hat and tails required. We um, do our best to involve the customers. We ask them to dance if they have no knowledge of ballroom dancing, especially not of Victorian ballroom dancing, which is different. We'll teach them. Kathleen and her husband James also own and operate the Period Events and Entertainment Recreation Society, also known as Peers, a nonprofit that's been around since 1994. So you could come away from a visit to the Dickens Fair having walked in the footsteps of Scrooge, Fezziwig, and all the attendees from that famous scene by participating in what's known as a country dance. That must mean it's a dance of the country, right? Not quite. Country dance seems to be a corruption of uh, the French contredance, which describes a dance of couples, of men on one side, uh, women on another, um, Heavens, we don't use those terms anymore. We say leads and follows. And then there are a series of figures that, uh, that the couples do as they progress down the set. This style of dance has a long history, and it evolved significantly over time. They were originally not from the countryside. They evolved out of Italian court dances and gradually spread to the middle and working classes and the peasants. And it was, it was one of those dancing styles that everyone did. This remained a very, very popular dance style for um, a couple hundred years. The dances we read about in A Christmas Carol and see at the Great Dickens Christmas Fair have names. Names like A Long Ways for As Many As Will and Sir Roger de Coverley. Sir Roger is the most popular and it was usually the concluding dance of a ball. That's the one we enjoy concluding um, an occasional set with. But it's a lot like the American Virginia Reel. There's a first couple that's active, and they do a series of figures with the last couple in the set and um, gradually work their way down the set, and then there's a new first couple. Usually we stick to four or five couples. In A Christmas Carol at Mr. Fezziwig's party, there are 20 couples in the set. That would be energetic, to say the least. That would be strenuous. Now, in A Christmas Carol, the sole musical accompaniment to all the dancing was a loaned fiddler. 
And while that was obviously enough to make everything merry and bright in Fezziwig's counting house that night, it's just one of many possible musical settings you might find. It would depend on the income of the host. Mr. Fezziwig is a prosperous businessman, uh, but even then, this is, a, this is an informal office party. And uh, so he hires a fiddler. Sometimes I'd have the fiddler, or perhaps two fiddlers, a keyboardist, and uh, a flutist, perhaps. That would not be uncommon. Wealthier or aristocratic couples might have a full chamber orchestra, perhaps. I've danced to all different kinds of combinations of instruments, and I enjoy them all. The Great Dickens Christmas Fair is one of my favorite parts of Christmas in the Bay Area. It was wonderful to visit again this year and get into the Christmas spirit and learn something new about Christmas past. My thanks to the fair and especially Denise Lamont for inviting me. A big thanks also to Kathleen and James Myers. Check the show notes to this episode for links to the Dickens Fair and Piers. Now it pains me to say it, but our time together this season is growing short. Christmas is just about one week away, and then Christmas of 2023 belongs to Christmas past. I hope you've been having a wonderful season, and I'm looking forward to spending the rest of it with you. Stay subscribed for another full week of episodes, and then join me as always on Christmas Day for our annual look back at the sights and sounds, news and events that made Christmas of 2023 what it was. I'll see you again soon, and I'll remind you for now that Christmas Past is produced in wonderful Willow Glen, California, by yours truly, Brian Earle. You can drop me a line anytime, and I wish you would because I always love to hear from you. You can reach me at christmaspastpodcast at gmail.com or connect through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And if you haven't joined our private Christmas Past Facebook group yet, do it today and join in on our year-round family celebration. And hey, if you're really feeling the Christmas spirit, why not help more people discover this show? It's as simple as telling a friend about it or leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. If you do leave a review, I'll send you a Christmas Past sticker and a handwritten Christmas card is my way of saying thanks. Reach out for details, and until we meet again, may your days be merry and bright.